everybody, it's Tyler here at the first championship, checking team number 4414 High Tide. Three blue banners on wins this year already. Phenomenal machine and one of the best robots in the world every single year they've been around. Take a look at High Tide and what they have to offer. This incredibly cute compact machine that they bring together has a huge punch. We're gonna be talking about uh, all their processes. They go through some cool stuff on programming, maybe some iterations and how this robot has all come together. Let's talk about High Tide on Behind the Bumpers. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark has parts and products designed specifically for first Robox competition and first tech challenge teams. Many Animark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit Animark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Alicia, let's start out on talking about for high tide, the manufacturing process that goes into your robot. Uh, you know, how you're able to get to where you are. You have one of the most just aesthetically pleasing robots, but also functional robots as well too. And a little bit more about your Astorb as well too would be great. Yeah, so we have three main uh, methods of manufacturing on a robot, lasering, bending, and machining. So in-house we have two lasers and our main sponsor Fabrics just got a brand new 1030 fiber laser. Um, with that we're able to go through I think 3 eighths aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Um, we also have two Haas CNC machines, a DM2 and a VF3. As a machinist, one of my favorite uh, parts that we've milled this year is the top plate of our custom serve module. So towards the beginning of the year we realized that the easiest way to optimize cycles at a higher level is by physically driving faster. Um, last year we did a pretty good job at making an undefendable robot and we used the same ideas and applied it to our design this year. Um, with a lack of end game uh, this year, we were able to play around with extra motors a lot. And with that we um, made a 12 motor swerve drive. And with our swerve drive, we're using SDS MK4i swerve modules with a custom um, top plate and with that we've incorporated a second drive motor that engages with the same main drive gear right here and we do that with a 25 tooth uh, motor pinion and L1 motors, L1 Falcons and our gear ratio with this is 4.6 to 1 and our FPS falls at just above 24 um, and with all that, that gives us a hypothetical top speed of 23.3 feet per second. Uh, as we continue on in this robot, uh, Meg, we're going to be talking about more of the uh, structures of some of the scoring mechanisms that you have on your robot as well. So love to hear. Give me a full breakdown of uh, some of these aspects. Haas been working on and we'll be demoing some of this as well, too. It'd be great. Uh, yeah, so we are running a fully belt driven elevator and it's been extremely low maintenance. And we've made this one at the beginning of the season and haven't had to do very much uh, between competitions and with the belt driven elevator everything is just super nicely packaged and we don't have to have any polycord or pulley mechanism uh, at the bottom of our robot. Um, along with that we have this vir uh, virtual non-parallel four bar arm and we do it with two sprockets one on the arm and one on the pivot point and the way that we're running this is just with chain the turnbuckles on each side allow us to really optimize angles, which allows us to intake cones on the ground that are tipped towards us, also cones standing up on the ground, and have a nice feeder and scoring position. Um, we use 20 DP gears on our pivot also to reduce weight, and yeah. Um, let, let me ask you something, Andy, robot-wise. So as you have continued throughout the season, what, have, what has maybe been some of the top attributing factors to getting your cycle times even quicker and quicker on the field? Yeah, well, as Alicia talked about, you know, uh, the 12 motor sport really helps and we've just been working with our driver to continue to drive faster and faster as he's had more experience with the robot. Uh, so something that has made us really fast this season is our cube intake. And so our, our cube cycles are way faster than than any of our cone cycles or anything else that we do. And so this was actually a late add on to our robot, but what we did uh, was we're interfacing the cube intake with our actual intake. So through this, 
we just have a nice pass through opportunity, which because of our wide elevator, we had that opportunity possible. Um, and so from this, we just have rollers and different like taped or just plain Lexan sections that help to guide the cube into our claw intake, which then will allow us to score at higher mid. Let's show like tip down Tom. Yeah, so that's like our mid scoring position. And also with the cube intake, we are, you know, we're really just making everything a lot faster. We took a lot of inspiration from intakes last year. Um, and the cube being such like an object that can really change its size and change how it is, uh, you know, shown in the robot is allows us to do this. Let's show some cone stuff. So that was about like our standing cone set point. And this is our stow angle. And so we really optimized to have a good stow angle this year just because going across the field and you know having a low CG was really important for us. And now let's try to let's start scoring it. Yeah, so when we score it, we actually drop it straight down onto the node, which was important for us, uh, just so that we could have a more precise scoring. Uh, on your own, do you have a preference between cubes and cones? Like do you find you are a little bit more efficient on one versus the other? Yeah, I mean, our, our cube acquisition is a lot faster uh, than our cone acquisition. And so be, as a result, you know, we, we tend to have a preference for cubes. But I would say we're very fast at both. Irene, I can't wait to hear about some of the programming that goes into this robot and what really makes this work. I mean, we saw some of your positional control come out on there, but I'd love to just hear a little more breakdown of what goes into High Tide's robot this year from a programming standpoint. Yeah, of course. Um, one thing I'm really excited about this year is that we actually have three limelights instead of one. So this gives us an almost an 180 degree field, like vision on the field. And the way we filter these is that we grab the largest TA area so that we know which one to grab. And we really wanted to have three limelights instead of one this year, because as we auto drive and we go up to the April tags, we wanna make sure we can see the April tag up to the very last second. And uh, speaking of April tags, um, this is our button board. So this is actually like, one of my favorite parts this year, there are 27 buttons that correspond to each of the scoring locations on the field. So when we press a button, it's, um, it like returns a pose and we actually generate a dynamic trajectory on the fly. So it takes in the robot's current velocity in our heading and it crafts a new trajectory towards this position. Also, when we press these buttons, it also uh, generates an, um, an automatic elevator scoring command. So this goes to all the low points, midpoints, and the high points. Um, yeah. This year, we also implemented uh, FOC on our motors. So this allows us to have lower and lighter gear ratios and also allows the motors to run slowly. When you're looking at, uh, first of all, I want to talk about your control panel a little bit. I've, I've seen a lot of teams like talk about the concept of doing that, but you're the first time I've seen this done like a full grid before mm -hmm. on a control panel. Like, was that something you're like initially right away? You're like, this is something we have to do on a robot or how did that uh, come up to go that path? Yeah, so basically on our team, our main idea is to always make it as fast and easy as possible for our drivers. So we did think that th this was pretty essential from the beginning. There was a lot of tuning and a lot of different like path planning. Um, but yeah, we always tune our PID constants and we've really, this is something that we've really been working on this se season. I mean, you talk about April tape detection a little bit. Are you doing anything from uh, object detection as well too for like the cubes and cones? Um, we don't do like the um, like object detection. However, we do detect um, what kind of objects we have in our sensors. So on our arm, we actually have a cube and cone sensor. And in our bar intake, we actually also have another sensor right there. So we also try to um, automate as much of the, as many of the commands as possible. So when we realize that we're scoring and there's no more object in there, it automatically goes down and the elevator goes down and our driver knows when to release and leave. And also when we're also at the feeder station, once we have a cone or a cube, it automatically goes down. So our driver knows when we have an object. I love it. And everything that's gone to the high tide robots is incredible. I will say one big request we've been getting, and I'm actually starting to see teams emulate this as well, is an overview of your pit as well too. And Adia, you got to break this down for me. This is something I know what, at Chessie Champs, I really want to do like a behind the pit sort of thing, but I think this is a great opportunity to talk about how awesome it is. And like I said, I'm starting to see teams that are literally taking what you're doing and implementing it for their own pits because it's so incredible. Talk to me more about it. Yeah, so as a team, we really prioritize having an organized and clean work area at all times. Um, and we do this by using the same pit um, setup in our shop as well as during conference season. And this allows us to basically 
uh, whatever tools we use to make the bot, we have the same access to the same tools when we're, you know, repairing the bot, and that makes it really easy to do instant repairs between matches. Um, to give a really quick overview of the pit, we have a very modular rack system that's custom made in-house. From uh, we're from Sesame Manufacturing, which is a, a fabrication company, so we're allowed to do these things um, custom. Um, it takes inspiration from an Excel style sheet uh, with numerical columns or numerical rows and alphabetical columns. Um, and one of the philosophies, main philosophies on our team is to always be that 1% better. We always have a little bit extra room to iterate and improve. And we do this a lot, not only for a robot, but also for a pit. Uh, for example, in the last year, we've in implemented um, many new designs into our pit. For example, now we have a designated programming area with computer stands, a phone charger, um, you know, cord storage, and everything's super neat and organized now. Um, we also have the famous high tide mini fridge, the um, battery rack storage, and extra storage over here. Coming over to the corner pit, uh, we have access to the internet via an ethernet connected phone, uh, which is unique as our team. Uh, not only benefits us as a team, but also surrounding teams in seeing uh, live matches um, in the pit. And then over here, we have a very modular rack storage over here, which is very sleek. So we balance the line between being easily accessible as well as being, you know, um, a little bit undetected and out of the way. Um, we can store tubes and shafts up here. And we also have magnetized surfaces all along the pit where we can store other things um, along the walls. And finally, sorry. Um, we have custom foam inserts and 3D printed inserts for all of our drawers, which can you know, really organize not only the outside, but also the inside of our pit. And lastly, something that's super new in our pit is the Pit Viper, which is a custom tool holster um, that we created for our pit crew. Because one of the issues we've always had is being able to, uh, you know, manufacture, or sorry, uh, is being able to iterate and fix things on the fly. So when we are not in the pit and we don't have access to equipment in the pit, we can use a pit viper to, you know, save the day and we can fix things really quickly. All right, I got a couple of quick follow-ups before yeah. we wrap up here. One, uh, is this available for teams to like utilize or anything like that in the future? Or is that something that teams might be able to get in the future? We have posted it um, online on Chief Delphi um, and we've seen other teams actually make their own versions of it. Currently, we don't have the CAD available, but that's something that we could look into in the future. I'm looking for that. And same thing with your pit too, right? The yeah. same thing where if teams want to emulate what this pit is, that's also available too, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, anytime any, you know, any other team has a question, they can always come up to us, ask us how we did this. Um, all of our stuff is available on the Chief Delphi post as well. We've linked everything, so yeah. All cool. right, last I got to ask you, you said you have the famous mini fridge. What is the, <laughs> what is the drink of choice for 4414? Maybe not during the competition. Um, Red Bull. Lots <laughs> of, of, of Red Bull. <laughs> awesome. Well, 4414 High Tide, thank you so much for telling us. Of course, incredible machine, incredible pit. What an incredible team overall and the great package that they bring. So we wish you best of luck here at Worlds and uh, congratulations on your continued success. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-paced camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.